Hey everyone, Navid Asarzadeh from Magnet Forensics here, and today is part one of us taking a look at how we can use Magnet Axiom's built-in functionalities of File System Explorer and recently redesigned SQLite Viewer to dig deeper for evidence and go beyond our native artifacts. In part two, we'll take a look at how we can automate this same process with Axiom's custom artifacts, cutting down greatly on our analysis time and customizing Axiom to fit our own particular environments, having Axiom really do the heavy lifting for us. Today, our focus is a case of data exfiltration of company confidential data by an employee who was using his Google Docs account using the folder AutoSync. Even though we don't have access to the user's Google Cloud account, the sync functionality leaves behind SQLite databases with some very useful information for us regarding the docs that the employee has sent to the cloud. As you can see here, we have a Vin Windows 10 image processed into Axiom. By looking at our existing artifacts and Axiom connections capabilities, we found that our subject is using Google Docs on his work system. Now it's time to dig a little deeper. Let's go ahead and go to the File System Explorer. From the File System Explorer, we've selected the OS partition. From the OS partition, we've gone down to the users, found the user that we're interested in. And from here, we're digging deeper into his app data, from app data to local, Google, Drive, and then finally, user default. From within user default, we'll see that there's two databases that I've already highlighted. These are the two that I'm interested in. Let's go ahead and start with syncconfig.db. On the right side, you'll see the SQL viewer. Let's go ahead and pop this out for a better look. Expand this out so we can get a full look of our data. And as we look through this data, there's a couple of things that are going to pop right out to you. The first is local sync root path, which is the default path that they're syncing from, that the user is syncing from on the local machine and user email, giving me the user's email and the account that he's syncing to, both being very important to me and to my investigation, so I've noted both. Let's move on to the next database. Put that back in its place. Go to snapshot.db. Let's go ahead and pop this out as we did the other. A bit more verbose than the other one, so let's expand it out and take a better look. Here we have multiple ta tables within this database. The one we're interested in is local entry. Let's go ahead and click on that and expand this data out. We've got the volume IDs, the file names, modified times, checksum, and the size. Now this becomes very interesting to us. As we see, we've got multiple files, JPEGs, and even some paths that I'm not sure I want listed here. I'm looking only for the files that were sent up to the cloud, that were synced up to his cloud. So what I wanna do is clean this up a bit. What we can do is build a query right here. So let's go ahead and run a very simple select statement. Click on build query. Select star from local entry, which is the table that we're at, where checksum is not null. Hit execute. It wipes out anything that had a null checksum. And so, so now we are looking only at the data, the files that were sent from JPEGs to several PDFs and a text file. We want to be able to whittle down this, this particular output a little further. So what we can do is use the find functionality that we also have within the SQLite viewer. So we hit find and we want only the documents and JPEGs that have the word Nick in them. So we go ahead and put in Nick, enter, and now we have just the data that was synced. There are times which we can convert that I'll show you again within our part two of this particular uh, series and the checksums for those pieces of data that were sent onto his Google Cloud. At this point, we can also report 
if we want to. We can export our findings by clicking export, typing the name that we would like for the CSV to have, click save, and that export is complete. We can go ahead and click open and take a look at our particular findings. Basically, what we did was save to a CSV showing exactly what our filtered findings were from that database for reporting purposes. Thank you for taking the time for watching this video today. Stay tuned for part two, where I'll show you how you can automate this and have Axiom do the heavy lifting for you.